doctors. Our health care isn't free, of course. I guess pictures of people paying their taxes aren't very gripping. Moore prefers to dwell on the fact that our doctors have flash cars and 500 grand houses and earn 85,000 a year. It's not a picture campaigning NHS doctors recognise. So I mean, what would you say if, uh, you know, to American doctors who, who were looking at this thinking, wow, I must immediately move myself and all my family to the UK? I think there are, Michael Moore presumably paints a, a very rosy picture of the UK and actually there are some significant problems here that we have to address. The most high profile has been the failure of medical training and that's hugely damaged for our morale. We have 14,000 doctors forced out of training and that has impact not only on doctors but on all staff in the NHS, particularly on nurses, paramedical staff and secretaries, all who help run a fantastic NHS service. With all the bad press, I suspect many in the NHS will get a kick out of Michael Moore's film and he does point up some interesting positive contrasts between the UK and the US. For example, even the poorest English 55 to 65 year old tends to be healthier than in the US. But most of us will come away thinking there's an awful lot of downsides to our socialised medicine that he's leaving out. Like the fact that we have just five MRI scanners per million people compared to a developed country average of 10 and 26 in the US. Or the fact that our cancer survival rates are still among the worst in the rich world. English men have only a 45% chance of surviving five years after being diagnosed with cancer, compared with 66% in the US. The authors of a recent international study on this agree with Moore that uninsured cancer patients in the US have trouble getting timely treatment and access, but, they say, a far larger proportion of cancer patients in Europe face these troubles. In their view, no country on the globe does as good a job on cancer overall as the US. There's a small industry now devoted to criticising Moore's selective way with facts, and not just from the right. Michael Moore is a chicken shit! One recent anti-Moore film was made by two liberal Canadians who say they were surprised by what they dug up. For example, in the film Roger and Me in 1989, which made his name, the running motif is that Moore never gets to talk to the head of General Motors, Roger Smith, about the plant closures in Moore's hometown. Except, it turns out Moore did meet with Smith. He just didn't put it in the film. What do you say to critics who say you manipulate facts in your film to make your point? That's true. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> film is edited. It is manipulated to present a point of view. It certainly is when he does it, and it's rewarded at the box office. Fahrenheit 9-11 was the most successful documentary of all time. Which way to Guantanamo Bay? The big stunt in Sicko is taking uninsured Americans to Guantanamo as the only place on US soil with free health care. They're refused, shock. Then get welcomed into the Cuban health system with open arms. You'll either love it or hate it, much like Michael Moore. So I asked Michael Moore why he thought British health care was so much better than that in America. Well, first of all, you have it. <laughs> you have it. It's a human right uh, in Great Britain that if you get sick, you have a right to see a doctor and not have to worry about paying for it. In the United States, it's uh, whether or not you have the money. And if you don't have the money, then it's too bad. And there's 50 million Americans that don't have the money and so therefore they go without insurance. So just on that very basic primal level, uh, uh, you already are, are way down the road uh, past us when it comes uh, to taking care of your people. But do you accept that we have quite a lot of problems? You've got a very rosy view of the NHS. For example, we've long waiting lists for some treatments, some drugs are not available in some areas, we have hospitals that are very dirty, we have one of the highest rates of MRSA in Europe. Where, where, where? <laughs> What a bunch of whiners. <laughs> I mean, no, all kidding aside, uh, yes, you, uh, you have problems with your system. You have a lot of problems with your system. And, uh, uh, you, um, uh, and there's problems with the quality of the system. But for you as Brits to fix, uh, it's, I'm talking about the basic underlying value is that you as British citizens believe that you're all in the same boat and you have to take care of each other. And, and yes, there are flaws in the system, but that's only because you allowed Mrs. Thatcher to start uh, gutting your social services, uh, which she did a, a pretty decent job of doing, and then new labor uh, came along and uh, didn't really fix the, the problem. 
and and uh, and now they they love to talk about privatization and private insurance and all this private stuff. Let's go the American way because Mr. Blair is so enamored with the American way. Uh, and now it's up to Mr. Gordon, I guess, to see whether or not he, uh, Mr. Brown whether or not he's going to uh, uh, change things. Well, at the risk of more whining, when I lived in the United States, there were more MRI scanners, for example, in the town of Little Rock, Arkansas, than in the whole of London. You've got five times as many MRIs per head of population than, the, than, than we have in Britain. Some things are better in the United States. So why is it that you live longer than we do? I mean, the, the latest study shows that the poorest Brit lives longer than the wealthiest American on Park Avenue. Why is that? Because uh, you, you don't have as many MRIs as they have in Little Rock, Arkansas? Uh, I, think, I, I think that uh, you're a little too enamored with America and all its gizmos. Uh, ooh, look at that. They can launch a missile and not even have to push a button now. <laughs> you know, you need to stop uh, uh, admiring uh, this country and, and, and go back to what you uh, uh, do best. There was one part in your film where you took some Americans to Cuba for treatment. Now, I've been in the healthcare system in Cuba. I've seen that they locked yeah. up AIDS patients to stop them from passing on the disease to other people. There's some very nasty things in the Cuban healthcare system. Yeah, and there's some things about Britain that are really nasty. I mean, <laughs> I mean you lock up Irish people without giving them a trial. Uh, does that mean your system should just be thrown out or ignored or, or let's say you don't have a democracy? I know we wouldn't do that, would we? I mean, all these systems have their flaws and have their problems. And what's amazing about Cuba is that here's a very poor third world country, 90 miles from our shores, and yet they're still willing to guarantee uh, that everybody who needs to see a doctor can see a doctor. And again, another country uh, that has a longer life expectancy, a better infant mortality rate, that we do here in the richest country on earth. Why is that? Do you think anything is really going to change in the American healthcare system? Hillary Clinton tried it once before. Now your film says she is taking money from healthcare providers, the very people who don't want things to change. So is it unreformable? Hillary's plan is not a good plan. It keeps the insurance companies involved. Private profit-making companies have no business being involved in taking care of sick people. We, and, and I noticed that, uh, you know, there are people in your country that uh, believe that that's the way to go and uh, to, to privatize more of this. And uh, uh, you never want a doctor or hospital having to make a decision uh, as to whether or not they should provide help to someone based on how it affects the bottom line. You don't want to go that way. And I, I, I would be very worried about people who are trying to take you in that direction in, in the UK. Well, exactly on that point, Kaiser Permanente, one of the bogeymen in your film, is being consulted by the NHS. It seems that we're going that way. That's right. Unbelievable. Uh, as is uh, United Healthcare and some of these other private companies. That, uh, but again, this is this is the disaster. In my humble opinion, uh, I don't live there. I'm not a citizen of your country, but. If you want to be like us, then you've got to take not just the good, all those MRIs in Little Rock, you've got to take the bad with it too. And the reason why you might have a little longer wait for some things in Britain, uh, elective procedures or whatever, a hip replacement, it's because you let everybody in the line. You let everybody get health care. You see, in our country, we remove 50 million people from the line. <laughs> One out of six people is kicked out of the line. So naturally, if you, anytime you remove 50 million people from the line, the line's going to get a little shorter. And so we get help, you know, a few weeks ahead of you do. Uh, the, but, but is that right? Is that morally right? I mean, uh, uh, I got to believe most British citizens uh, uh, would, would rather have a little bit of a wait, not for emergencies, not life and death issues, but, you know, elective surgery or whatever. If it meant you had to wait a little bit, but, but the results of that mean that every British citizen has health care, I got to believe most uh, Brits would uh, favor uh, all people having the health insurance and, and we could wait a little bit for some things. Michael Moore.